Yes, you may start now. Thank you. Okay. A very good afternoon to all. I hope you are all safe, healthy, and at home. I'm Bhavna Tamang from the Department of English, and I'm very pleased to welcome you all on behalf of my department to the Gurudas College Webinar 2020, uh, jointly organized by the Department of English and IQAC. The speaker we have with us today is Professor Arijit Mondol, uh, who will be speaking on the topic, uh, The Feeling of Disgust history, philosophy, and literature. Now, before we move on to the talk, let me just give you a short introduction to our speaker. <clears throat> uh, Arijit Mondal is currently employed as an assistant professor in the Department of Film Studies at Jadavpur University. He's also a PhD research scholar at the Department of English in University of Delhi. He has completed his MPhil degree course from the Center for Social Sciences, Kolkata. Currently, his research topic is locating and studying various aspects of disgust in the aesthetic and literary field in Indian literature. And his primary interests are studies in aesthetics of decay, disgust, and horror. So, Arijitda, we are very pleased to have you with us today. And um, we are also very excited to hear what you have to say. Uh, before, I, before we start with that, let me just um, inform our viewers and our students that uh, after Orijidda has done with is done with his speech the live comments will be open for everybody to you know give their queries or questions so i would suggest my students to please have their questions ready after um, right after he's done with his talk uh, so without further ado Orijidda, i would like to invite you to deliver your talk thank you Hi. Uh, so, uh, as you, as uh, Bhavna rightly said, my topic is disgust. And uh, before, uh, so <clears throat> my inquiry is on how uh, how disgust we we have to treat disgust in literature or in cinema uh, or in various other uh, mediums, but to understand that we have to understand what disgust is and how disgust becomes political so i have a short uh, uh, powerpoint presentation i'll put that on now so yeah uh, uh, we can start from here what is disgust so we all have faced uh, disgust at some point of time, and perhaps we do every day. Now that we are in times of Corona, we uh, we we are more panicking about uh, you know how things may invade us. The, the The virus it is not just a virus anymore; is it's it's also a part of our daily culture. Uh, so. When we talk about disgust in modern times, how should we begin? So at first, we have to clear one thing that disgust is an aversive reaction. So it's a it's a reaction. It's not an emotion, so to speak, that uh, uh, it, it, it is not uh, something uh, th that always has you in its grasps. Uh, it is it is an emotion but rather it's it is better to acknowledge it as an aversive reaction we always are disgusted by something we are always disgusted uh, by someone so it's a, it's a response stimuli so to speak that something triggers disgust in us and we are disgusted now well it's present in all cultures in different forms, but that itself is very, very uh, problematic. What is disgusting to you may not be disgusting to another person from another culture or another uh, upbringing. So what is food to you, what is uh, everyday smell to you may feel disgusting uh, to another person. And that is one of the problems of disgust. 
uh, that that it, it is not it is not uh, fixed by uh, by any particular uh, culture or any particular person it keeps on varying it keeps on changing uh, so a, a good example is so uh, when i was in delhi uh, some in some cases i would see that people would be very much uh, offended or 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 very uh, bothered about the smell of cooking fish now they are clearly disgusted by the smell of cooking fish but we know that there are some fish uh, uh, like english or prawns or whatever when you get the smell you salivate it's not just it's a good smell to you but it's so good that you salivate uh, that you are prepared to eat uh, the same happens uh, you can see in case of uh, something uh, that is more common in bengali the dried fish it should keep much a lot of people do have it a lot of people don't those people who don't have it can't stand it at all and uh, that's very culturally enmeshed so uh, again it's it's a very cultural phenomenon it's a very upbringing kind of a phenomenon so there is no one particular we are form trying to form understand disgust as a broad uh, sense but we are not trying to say that this is disgusting this is not that is not my goal that should not be our goal uh, there is no one particular thing that is disgusting but uh, disgust as an emotion is different from hatred anger or fear so for example uh, it's different from hatred because hatred is a is a is a is an uh, is a emotion that is based on ethics mane uh, you hate there is no one particular there is there is some reason or the other why you hate someone or why you hate a place or why you hate something like there is an ethical violation somewhere you may hate a person just because that person but that is because this person reminds you of someone else so hatred is always on the basis of an ethical violation we hate we do not generally go out into the street and hate everyone or hate whoever we meet we hate certain people for certain reasons that uh, that are historic anger is also the same uh, quite similar to so anger is basically a, a forward thrusting emotion that often masks several of our uh, other emotions like insecurity so anger sometimes we get angry when we are sad or hurt um, we are angry at, at uh, people when they do something wrong or um, have violated uh some of our codes some of our rules so the anger people uh in large majorities are angry uh or, or, or what we see as viral videos or what we see as uh you know news uh, where people are angry at one particular aspect or one angry at a particular government this anger comes from a certain sense of uh violation that okay this was not done this is not this is unjust this is uh, this is not supposed to happen but it did hence i am angry it comes from a deep sense of uh other emotions like regret like sadness uh, so an angry person sometimes is of uh, uh, is a person who is deeply hurt um uh, and then again there is fear disgust is also different from fear you may be afraid of say a corpse uh, but you you may be afraid of death but that is because you are afraid of dying itself or the dead coming back or in in a sense that fear is futuristic in nature fear is something that uh, makes people um, 
you know look into the future and 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 be scared so we fear something that that we think will harm us in the future we do not fear about the past we fear about pa repeating past mistakes that's different but we fear is futuristic mane hocche you you are only afraid of things that can hurt you in the future or that can uh, you know violate you or uh, in some way bother you in the future so in that sense fear is very futuristic but anyhow moving on uh, as i said hatred is moral ethical uh, fear is futuristic and anger and rage are not aversions so uh, the the other thing that we have to uh, keep in mind is how the five senses that we have uh, touch taste smell um uh sight and uh and and hearing all these sen senses are part of our emotional intelligence are are deeply connected to our emotion these are senses through which these are mediums through which we gather data gather sensory data uh gather uh let's say information about our surrounding and then we are uh we process them according to our own uh, consciousness according to our understanding so for disgust however and this is very important sight and touch are important uh to a very important degree you are disgusted by seeing something you are disgusted when you touch something so for example if you touch uh uh an interesting and understanding here is darwin was one of the first people who theorized who tried to theorize disgust and this is from darwin's emotions and expressions of man and other animals this is a book by him now when darwin first is talking about disgust he is giving an example that he was having a meal he was sitting down and having a meal and it was a cold cut meat so it's a it's a it's a meat that is uh you know um it's it's a cold meat and there is uh, some a native of uh, native indigenous person of tierra del fuego uh, who comes and sees this and then this person touches darwin's uh plate and and the meat immediately two things happen darwin is disgusted by this person touching his meat the other person is disgusted by the fact that darwin is having cold meat because in our culture in most cul cultures that are closer to uh that are not used to uh, let's say cold weather and uh conditions where you have to pickle or uh, store meat for longest period of time uh, because it's a harsh winter places which do not have a harsh winter often tend to have their uh, meat you know live or or made with fire and warm so we are we all, ourselves as indians are also a culture who are very much only recently this, this concept of salami sausage etc is introduced but largely we are still um people who um who are very much uh you know in the habit of having meat that is warm that is hot so there are two things happening here darwin is disgusted because someone who is a native mind you he is english and this is a native from another uh, this is a colored person uh from an indigenous tribe who's touching his food he's disgusted by that so it's political 
and he on the other hand is disgusted by the fact that someone is having a cold meat so that is also political but it is also existential so coming back uh, i'm saying that sight and touch sometimes you touch people or uh, let's say you 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 uh, like for example it's it's very very much uh, in practice right now that touch is considered uh you know the the coronavirus thing the touch and um, nearness of another person is considered as a uh, easy a way of transferring the virus so we are very careful of touching these days but even before the coronavirus thing happened we were uh, wary of touching say dermatological disorder karuki chatta hoyeche chamrai Uh, someone is having a say an eczema or uh, or uh, certain uh, ringworm or any particular uh, boils fora etc we are somewhat disgusted in touching that so uh, sight and touch are very important often hearing too you perhaps are disgusted by say I'll tell you an example of uh, a disgusting sound. Slimy sound is disgusting. The sound of slime. So if it's sound of uh, uh, like a uh, imagine uh, imagine something wet and slimy rub- rubbing against some uh, some surface that. Uh, that like like uh, like a wet uh, wet cloth being dragged across a surface that in itself can cause disgust so s- sounds can often trigger disgust as well but most important are taste and smell so this is one of the thing that is uh, very important for when we learn this gas is that there is no other sense that is stronger than the taste uh, that is strong in 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 uh, in triggering this gas than taste and smell you eat something and it tastes bad it tastes bad or it uh, it has the texture of something really bad say you uh, accidentally have a uh, you accidentally have food and it is slimy it has gone so bad that it it has become slimy uh, or you uh, you you taste some rice and realize that it has become slimy and sour now rice is not supposed to taste sour and slimy immediately what you do is you throw out and you wash your uh, mouth or whatever the point is that taste and disgust are very quintessentially related they they they, they are um they are quite closely related and so is smell you are immediately smell is something like a uh, okay the smell uh, itself if you uh, if you if you notice carefully smell has a very invasive character smell you you uh, you are going through somewhere and there is something bad like um, like there is a drain over there or there is an open drain over there or there is a tannery or there is uh, something has is deep uh something in the bushes is rotting out there and you smell it you didn't desire to smell it you didn't want to smell it but you smell it and that is something that is invasive quality of smell that you smell it even if you do not want to and this is something that also uh you know triggers disgust that uh when you smell something bad smell is something disgusting you feel the the automatically you feel like throwing up you feel like puking 
but anyhow in india too we have uh, we have we have a sort of a theory on emotions and that is the rasa the problem with rasa is this that rasa is not directly a study of emotions rasa is a study uh, well uh, natya shastra is study of dramaturgy or how drama is made or what drama does so in that sense rasa is the perception of emotion so uh, primarily this is the reason why i am sticking to um not indian uh, indian understanding of emotion or indian understanding of rasa or bhava but uh, towards more uh, western uh, you know west uh, western theories <clears throat> uh, but anyhow see uh, this image might not look good but uh, of course disgust has an invading quality so when you are watching this image when you are looking at this image it feels as if uh, as if something is crawling up your spine something is crawling on your back or you are you are somewhat repulsed by it uh, so disgust is has an invading quality it disturbs you it it triggers you it, it makes you uncomfortable um, so in that sense disgust has a uh, has a quality that is like no other uh, you are disgusted easily and it's what happens when you are disgusted is that you you want to run away from it if it is if you're still with me then part of you wants to uh, not look at it anymore but this is what what you would see but you would find that if you are going um, and that is i think part of the human condition or part of the uh, how humans work that if you are going somewhere and you see something disgusting you look away from it true but you take a, another look at it so in a sense you're disgusted by something but you look at it once more in order to look at uh, in order to uh, you know be sure that okay this is disgusting so in a way disgust is not boring disgust is invasive disgust is uh, well disgusting but it's not it's not boring and in that sense disgust has also uh, an invasive quality to it yeah and okay disgust itself has an infectious uh, so when we talk about infection uh, nowadays we uh, talk about it more uh, and we practice so many things like wearing masks wearing um, gloves and um, you know spreading uh, sanitizers etc etc um, but if you if you think about it then even before that before all of these things started happening before this meltdown of the coronavirus uh, thing we were still disgusted by infection it is as if that uh, in you know darwin theorized that uh, disgust is is a is a response is an evolutionary category um, of uh, you know is an evolutionary category of our resistance towards toxins the only reason we throw up we puke we vomit when we encounter disgusting things is because deeply inside we are thinking it is toxic in nature and we want just to um you know like uh, uh throw up so in a sense if you look at say here are two images of fungal infections the most common infections are um you know like of the fungal quality and it's easy to get it if you are if you are especially from the tropical areas so it, that makes us un, 
you know it it makes us nervous it makes us uh, sort of not very cool with it uh, so there is it that disgust has an infectious kind of a quality to it and we are it's ourselves disgusted by infection uh, again uh, there are some images that show the nature of infections and then there is the disgust in food so you would see that a lot of debates are there about oh they eat this and that is not be, uh, about some particular country that oh chinese are eating dogs or something like that it's also very localized that they eat with two hands ora do hate khay uh because th there are uh, uh a lot of even between even within bengali cultures there are certain families who use two hands in when they are trying to eat fish uh, especially taking out the bones of the fish kata vachte and some people don't so people who use let's say the the right hand the eating hand to hold the glass well some people they would be disgusted by someone using the left hand to eat food on the other hand people who are not used to this particular scene where uh, you know uh, where sorry uh, where people uh, think that uh, holding uh, holding with the, the the hand that you are using to eat you hold the same with uh, you hold uh, the glass of water with the same hand it's disgusting for a lot of people so in a sense uh, disgust is very very uh, very local and at the same time it's universal uh, i'm i'm getting to that why it is local and universal but anyhow disgust uh, about food is very uh, is very common and is very uh, you know you find it like in in lots of ways uh, among people so uh, we are disgusted by people that oh they eat dogs or oh they eat cows or the, they eat pigs and so on and so on but to them it's food on the other hand uh, they might be disgusted by some of the foods that we eat that you eat so in that sense there is no universal code for disgust that okay this particular food is disgusting and uh, a lot of cuisines change because of the reasons uh, because of historical reasons you know so for example if in a fertile land in a land which is very uh, which is doing good in terms of um, fertility in terms of a lot of things that like uh, they make lots of food annually and there is prochur khaddo samogri etc etc uh, they would they are okay with throwing away with lots of things but in a scarce condition in a condition where uh, where it's very cold or it's very arid or you don't find uh, let alone you know wasting food they would rather eat each and everything that they can cook or they can uh, eat from one particular thing so for example in rajasthan there is uh, this um vegetable called panchkota it's made of wattles it's, it's made of uh, what we call um, agacha it, 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 it's something that we would not even look on this side of the uh, country but to them it's food on the other hand they would be disgusted by fish uh, a lot of them uh, and not have it at all here we cannot live without fish so it's a it's a very um, sort of 
uh, uh, disgust and food it's it's a complicated relationship and there is a lot of politics uh, that goes with it uh, anyhow so coming back there is also disgust in association or personification we consider some people disgusting because of who they are because of what they do so in case of india it's very disgust is not just disgust okay disgust is very political in nature we associate some things with uh, so for example in caste system we associate some qualities to the lower caste to dalits to bahujans and we think that okay these people are like that and uh, these people like to live in slums these people like to work in this particular horrible conditions and this is why they are disgusting so the work and the condition that they live in are are taken together are like enmeshed together and they are they are then they then say that okay uh, this person is disgusting because they they like to do that or they do that or uh, their their job because their job is disgusting or their job is with objects that are disgusting they are targeted they themselves as a community are targeted as disgusting disgusting communities so disgust in association and personification is a problem is a political problem in india and it's also uh, in almost uh, other parts of the world in other parts of the world it could be another clan or it could be a color of your skin uh, or religion that these uh, these religions so for example uh, uh, for example uh, in case of uh, you know um, if i uh, remember correctly then uh the the warsaw ghetto had the least amount of uh, people being uh, dying of the plague and they were precisely used in that manner that um, by the by the uh, nazi uh, propaganda machinery that they themselves that the jews caused the uh, plague and the sickness all over but is the other way around that they were they were so meticulously clean because of the religious laws they were so meticulously clean that they didn't get uh, you, you know the uh, the plague and in many cases you see that certain communities and certain uh, uh, religions are targeted as if they are themselves spreader or you know they themselves are disgusting because they do disgusting things it it is it is a very political motivated thing that they do because we as humans are disgusted by many things when you take an agent of disgust when you take a reason of disgust and pin it on some particular community that look they do this you are disgusted by this they do this you are easily disgusted by that particular community so that is in india and in in other parts of the world as well in different manners disgust is very political yeah uh, okay there is uh, there is one more part where um, i would say that uh, disgust is disgust and death that is a relationship that i'll talk about a little bit and then i'll talk about literature death is scary for us death is horrifying for us we are scared of death but we but we are not disgusted by death hmm? or we are not disgusted by certain kinds of death we are disgusted only by dead that is uh, you know that has gone past a level so for example uh, we have seen uh, 
uh, we have seen that uh, vampires or um, or or several other uh, say Frankenstein, they are object of fear. They are object of even uh, to an extent vampires are eroticized. They 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 seem very uh, you know sexually active and all that. So. Uh, they are very sexualized as well. So we are not disgusted by vampires, but we are disgusted by a dead corpse which is rotting, which is bloating, which is showing signs of decay. So we are not disgusted by death. What we are disgusted by is decay after death. Because even if it's a fresh corpse, we touch their feet, we uh, we kiss them goodbye, uh, we we hold their hands, or we do so many other things to a freshly deceased corpse, and we are not disgusted uh, when we look at a freshly deceased corpse. Only when a corpse is, uh, you know, a past 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 a certain uh, element of. Uh, nature that we, that we find itself uh, that we find it disgusting so for example uh, a corpse that is bloated that is uh, that has turned green in color that has become uh, you know filled with maggots we would be disgusted by that not scared of that but disgusted by that so in that sense uh, you know we are afraid of death but we are not disgusted by that what we are afraid of is that life continues even after we are dead. The feeling that within our body, within our body itself, there are so many other uh, things uh, or, or, or our body is just food for worms and bacteria and other things that li the, the excess of life. Mane, Banglai bolte gale hoche. মানে জীবন শেষ হয়ে গেলে দেখা যায় আমাদের শরীরটাই হচ্ছে আরো প্রচুর জীবনের খাদ্য সো দ্যাট কাইন্ড অফ মেক্স আস ভেরি ওয়েরি ভেরি ডিস্টার্বড অ্যাজ হিউম্যান বিংস বিকজ উই ক্যান নট গ্রাস্প দ্যাট ওকে দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড ইজ নট ফর আস লাইফ কন্টিনিউস অ্যান্ড উই আর জাস্ট ফুড উই আর জাস্ট রিসাইকেল বাই আদার অ্যানিমেলস আদার ইনসেক্টস আদার ব্যাকটেরিয়া সো অন সো so death and disgust are related in that now coming to literature disgust however is part of profession of a lot of people so doctors are in doc if you have friends who, who or if you know people who have gone through training as doctor or nurses or as uh, healthcare workers they have certainly gone through uh, periods where they had to undergo a certain kind of a training where they were for at first disgusted by it but then it changed disgust is not something written on stone so if you are which is why it's so it's so it's so important and it's so political at the same time that disgust is always uh, uh, it could it can be changed you can unlearn disgust if you're uh, if you are uh, say for example you have a skin problem and you go to a dermatologist a dermatologist okay will wear a mask but he will touch you at, at the exact spot that you are having the dermatological disorder or so many other doctors will will have to closely to closely examine doctors and nurses do have to take a look or touch or feel um, you know our uh, our body when they do it so disgust can be unlearned. You can unlearn how to, if you were taught from childhood to be suspicious, just like hatred, you know, if you are taught from childhood how to be suspicious of a particular community or a particular person, you can unlearn how to not hate this person. The same with disgust. You can unlearn certain parts of disgust and it can change uh, which is why disgust can be used very politically as well that 
uh, if you uh, and it is always done by to an extent by uh, different people that you get a lot of whatsapp or other kinds of uh, news uh, or images that trigger you uh, into believing a certain kind of a narrative that look they are feeding you uh, cow meat or look they are feeding you uh, this that etc something that you are you are you are disgusted by and something uh, th there is there is the fact that you are disgusted by something and attaching it with another community so two together form um, a political opinion so it's easy to change political opinions in that manner uh, but it's also it, it's it's also unlearnable and that is what we see in literature in literature uh there are several authors who have uh, sort of used you know things that would disgust us to to further uh, as parts of their uh, writing so for example jonathan swift has written a lot about you know about sketchology uh, what we call uh, so he has written a lot about what we call uh, feces or shit uh, in case of India, there are two different uh, phenomena that can that I have seen. One is uh, just after the Naxalwari revolution, uh, there is the hungry movement in Bengali literature, and a lot of hungry hungryalist movement uh, literature, and even after that, say literature by Shubhimal Mishra, is uh, you know it it borders the the things that we are not comfortable with we are disgusted by uh, another uh, I, uh, similar uh, itinerary you can find in indian literature is literature by vilas sarang um, vilas sarang is an author in marathi literature as well as he wrote in english it just comes after the uh, movement of Dalit Panthers uh, movement in 70s. So I'll give you two examples of uh, Vila Sarang stories. One is where, so this story is called, okay, this is this is a book. Uh, it, it's, it's a book called The Woman in Cages. It's by Vila Sarang. <laughs> And uh, there is one story that says uh, it's called the order, the order of immortality, uh, and it it talks about a woman called Champa who is who is working as a prostitute in a brothel, and then one day asks Indra uh, that she wants one thousand vaginas, and. There is a graphic description of how people are tr using her uh, and uh, you know a as and using her 1000 vaginas especially men uh, all her male customers but then there are graphic descriptions of how she goes through uh, what she goes through during period during menstrual cycle um, the then ultimately she again gains a boon by again uh, gains favor by indra and uh, and shiva and she turns uh, shiva turns her uh, 1000 vaginas in 1000 eyes so then she becomes a goddess a goddess of eyes and she becomes immortal in a sense but there is another uh, story where called musk deer so it's about this guy who has who loses his job who loses his station who loses his uh, everything that he has in his life because he gets a small abscess uh, abscess means fora pakna fora uh, in his navel and it starts oozing out pus and it's almost like, and it, uh, it smells bad, but it's almost like um, 
he has become a deer because you know a mask is something that comes out of deers and deers navel so uh, it's almost like uh, he, uh, he he sees himself as a mask deer uh, where the, the the navel is considered something very important and very holy but he because it smells so bad and smells so much that he loses his job he becomes a uh, you know beggar and so on and so on uh, what all these and you can even see some of these elements in uh, not just in Vila Sarang and uh, and and Shuimal Mishra but also in other literatures see even uh, Kafka where you can see that people are using these elements of disgust or these triggers of disgust to show in literature, in, in culture, that how we treat each other and how easy it is for people with a certain kind of quality to lose their livelihood. Uh, because someone has an abscess, someone gets a, uh, gets a, you know, a certain sense of as, uh, someone is affected by a physical condition, we totally reject him. Uh, you can find it in metamorphosis as well. Someone turns into a giant bug and then uh, his whole life is gone. So it, it's always what all these lit, you know, people who are trying to trigger this disgust or repulsion in us are trying to say is this, that this, this thing that we these things that we find disgusting or repulsive are always around the corner and the more we are conservative about how we treat this how we you know if we you can just say that if i ask you a question what is disgust or, or what is disgusting uh probably most of you will say uh, that Oh, this is disgusting because it is disgusting. It's almost like love. Why do you love her or him? Oh, I love her or him because they are lovely. But that's not it. We have to see things like repulsion and disgust with a certain sense of a critical eye. And that is something that we see in literature as well as uh, cinema. Uh, uh, but mostly in literature where people are trying to discuss that if you push the boundaries and try to take a critical look into it, you'll find that um, these are our sufferings as human beings, as part of human species. These are our miseries. These are our existential problems. These are our political problems. And we have to work with that. So, yeah, uh, there is more to literature that I, we can uh, talk about while in the question answer, uh, taking question answer. So I would uh, conclude here and take your questions now. So if that is OK. Uh, uh, Bhavna, can you come back? Yes, I'm here. I hope everybody can hear me. So. Thank you so much, Arijitha, for that. Mm, it was very interesting, but uh, yeah, some of the pictures I was I was not very interested to look at. But huh, uh, before that, uh, before I say anything, I would like ask our viewers if they have any questions, please start giving it on the comment section. If you could do that, then our speaker is going to take your question. Let's wait for that. We should have our questions here. Huh. Thank you, Swati Di. Yes. You will be able to Swati see the questions once they start coming in. She's the head of the department, right? Uh, she is a part of our department, yes. Uh, we have a different head. Okay. Acha, okay. uh, so I uh, we didn't meet. But okay, we'll wait for that. Okay. 
but thank you so much arjit for the questions coming letting let me see that like personally i didn't know a lot about this of course so we have and, two swati in the department okay yes we have two swati these yes acha interesting acha anyways we haven't got any questions yet so while we were while we are waiting let me tell you like what i was thinking while you were saying this while you were, while you were talking about it you were also talking oh here we have sri lanka once it society often gets disgusted when a person tries to break the stereotypical norms in a society isn't it uh yeah uh breaking of a taboo there are there are in every society there are some taboos generally it's about uh sexual conduct and eating and how why sexual conduct and eating are very related to each other we can we can easily see that um you know the 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 pleasure content of eating and the pleasure content of uh the uh, you know of a sexual congress are quite similar so in that sense why people are so bothered about what people eat and what what people uh you know do sexually are very important so all these taboos you feel you see are generally about body so if you cut your hair uh if you color your hair or, or if you do something with your hair people get people get you know triggered or offended by it uh, if you do eat something that you you're not supposed to of your of you you wear something you're not supposed to people get uh, disturbed or they get often violent by uh, those kind of reactions because that is the nature of social tra- taboo and social uh regulations that they are supposed to control you control your body so in that sense yeah the, uh, people are uh, well triggered by disgust to a certain instant when you break rules but it's not written on stone that's the thing there are still people who would color their hair there are still people who would wear uh, different kinds of dress or eat something that you are not supposed to and uh, they fight and that's how society changes uh, for the better i i think that you make a progress you someone goes someone takes the first step some people take the first step and then society gets more you know open to newer possibilities newer things anyway yeah the next question acha we will okay thanks for such uh no well, i'll take swati this question first uh keep this question on screen but uh uh could you tell us a little bit about how this works on in the domain of cinema in particular where stylization uh uh stylization often takes away say the bloodiness of blood or the bodily secretions that come along with death uh yeah well as i said uh literature or cinema are both mediums and they are that they are forms they are mediums they cannot uh you know bring they, they can point towards what is happening so so a, so a photograph or an image of uh blood or gore or uh you know uh something disgusting uh uh is something that uh that is uh, that that we see you know on screen and we we can react to it but in on screen i would say and this is my theorization that it would be more of repulsion rather than disgust disgust is too real disgust is when you are actually placed in the vicinity of something disgusting 
so the reaction that you have in say for example if you are sitting in front of a, a pile of feces and you are seeing a photograph or a, a moving image or a cinematic image of a pile of feces are different you might get repulsed by the pile of image of feces but you would not be thoroughly you know that disgusted uh, in you you might not it might not you might not be repulsed at all it might just be a very uh, aesthetic thing for you but in in the close vicinity of that if you are placed in uh, near something that you are disgusted by it is too real an emotion to uh, to escape so in that sense both literature and cinema are mediums that can point you towards something disgusting but it cannot make you feel disgust as the real thing would do as a real disgusting thing in front of you would do so yeah uh, there was another question uh, could we apply this to our reaction of hunchback of notre dame or disgust turns to pity at the end okay hunchback of notre dame uh, so the uh, cosimodo the the phenomenon that uh, goes behind say for example no the pity part is the work of the author the pity part i would say is uh, is what the audience or the, what the uh, uh, what the person who is reading the text feels uh, or regret is something that maybe uh, the audience and people of the town feels together but uh yeah you the the reason why quasimodo or uh, the the hunchback of notre dame is seen as a disgusting person is because of uh, how hunchback itself as the deformity was considered as something disgusting as something and the same happened uh, with leprosy as well uh, people would treat lepers and throw them out of the uh you know um uh, town and you would have leper colonies and so on um uh, so it depends on how a society treats a deformity treats a disease so once you get to address more scientifically more critically on what and on how uh you know how you treat a disease or how you treat a particular affliction a particular uh, you know deformity disease etc if you if you see it more scientifically and critically the immediate reaction the emotion of disgust or repulsion is, is somewhat taken away and you f try to form more understanding more humanitarian view of these particular things so i think the unlearning part is not on individual level but on how society treats you know these things more uh, uh, if they treat it more scientifically yeah uh, the second question in most cases a family keeps a separate set of utensils for the domestic help has this feeling of disgust that is of course uh, see this is something that is in our society mostly the lower caste and the lower class are but the same or are treated the same so anyone who is from the lower class are treated by default as lower caste and lower caste themselves are treated in a very casteless manner so this thing about not eating from the same utensil as your domestic help is a direct result of a uh, uh, direct result of our uh, casteist uh, understanding of society uh, and we we see this in every juncture of our life that the the separate utensils is is a carry over of the untouchability practice and the brahminical practices of that we uh, have to an extent 
negotiated, but it's still very much there in different ways in our thinking. In Bengali, we have this word, the word itself, Warolok and Chotolok. So someone who is already, you know, Choto, is already a smaller person. So you're not supposed to treat this person equally as you do yourself. So of course, uh, there is a very uh, good, I am reminded of a very funny, yet very, very disturbing uh question that happened in this uh, jai bhim comrade there was a documentary it's available on youtube so there is this uh, part where people say that oh the people who clean uh, the sewers are uh, very dirty and they are having this festival and they are very dirty so the cameraman asks the question that are their shit more sh smelly than yours to which the the person who is answering uh, fumbles and cannot answer. But it's a very funny and very important kind of a question. Why do we think that people from lower stations than ours, people who are not us, have more smelly body or smelly feces than ours, than we do? It's, it's It comes from a superiority complex. It comes from a deep and enmeshed casteism, Brahminism, and elitism. So yeah, um, yes. is there gene identified for, no, 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 uh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, see, Darwin's understanding was challenged by a lot of other uh, later, uh, you know, theorists like Paul Rosen, uh, Manning Haas, and uh, so many other you know workers uh, uh, that you know although some of it is it it can uh, parts of it is evolutionary but it doesn't mean that it's carried on forward by genes it's more more of culture and it's more of how uh, closely you are related to uh, a certain kind of a culture so it's more of based on culture rather than innate nature so you see if it was not innate nature children would not be playing with their own feces with their own toilet with their own uh, excreta they would not they have no in you know no inhibitions about playing with it or messing around with it it's only when they start getting told that chi or yak or don't touch that is when they start learning disgust. So I don't think there is a gene deep certainty to disgust. Uh, yeah, sometimes disgust was a certain community, as you mentioned in the lecture regarding caste, then it's kind of demeaning for belittling them, which is very unjustified. Yeah, well, uh, of course, it is uh, unjustified, um, but uh, it is also there in society that um, people are treated differently because of their birth station or how, in which culture they are born on or which in which, um, uh, you know, uh, a, a, which community they belong to. So. Um, disgust in that sense at least in case of india i would say it's very political it's not in general i would say disgust is both political as well as existential existential because it makes you think about your own place in society and how okay um uh my god i am disgusted by this particular food uh, if you're disgusted by your own if you're disgusted by your feces if you're disgusted by something, then it makes you think that if if you're disgusted by, uh, say, maggots or or a bloated corpse or or blood, then it it should make you think about, okay, this uh, this is my end. This is how I will end one day. 
as a rotten food for uh, you know like rotten food for maggots and worms this is the this is the destiny of every human of every living creature being recycled through nature it makes you existentialist in a sense but it is also political in nature because it has used political uh, against different communities and against different religious minorities and so on so i would say it's both political and existentialist okay thank you so much arijita i think we've come to the fag end of our session also it's been an hour um and i guess now i should ask uh, swati moitra to please uh, give the vote of thanks yeah hi right uh, thanks bhavna thanks a lot um on behalf of the department of english i'd like to first and foremost of course thank our speaker professor urijit mondol for this wonderful discussion of disgust and the politics of it among other things i remain indebted to you for making me think about a lot of things and i hope we will be able to discuss this again sometime in the future we were very happy to have you um from there onwards i must thank first and foremost the principal of this college for blessing us with uh, giving her, her giving her uh, giving us her blessing for going ahead with this and for pre uh, offering us this platform in which we can uh, interact despite these dark times these webinars have in many ways helped us keep in touch so thank you ma'am we must thank the iqac and triparnadi for their coordination with us uh, no gurudash college webinar is complete without thanking joydeep da in particular because it is joydeep da who makes these things possible from generating the links to making the flyers and certificates possible to ensuring that there is no technical difficulty and there are often technical difficulties when we are involved and there are often i i called him 5 minutes before the seminar saying which is the link again so really thank you joydeep da without you none of this can be done and you have been doing this consistently throughout this summer so really there are not enough words of thank we are from i must also thank bhavna for helping us set this up in the first place we are extremely grateful to you for all the work that you have done to the head of the department swati di for uh, helping us go get go through with this in the first place and of course i must thank the audience here my esteemed colleagues for taking this time out to attend as well as our dear students it was lovely to see you however virtually in such a platform i hope you enjoyed yourself and we hope to see you in other seminars that the college will keep organizing as well uh, thank you very much have a great day and more importantly be safe thank you uh